Hi witches, welcome to April. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed what we did in March with Ostara and the green witchcraft and everything. But in April, I really wanna focus on um, broom closet magic. So magic that can be done without people being like suspicious or like being done kind of like in private as well as practical magic. So I'm not just talking about the movie. I know we kind of talked about some practical magic techniques, but um, I really wanna go kind of more in depth on this topic and talk about magic that we can do on a daily basis as witches. Um, I think that, you know, people kind of get really focused on doing all these really elaborate rituals or spell work that take a lot of ingredients and time and planning and there's like all that, but that's not, that doesn't have to be what witchcraft is. It's really kind of, it's up to you and a lot of witches kind of tend to want to do um, like more practical magic, how, uh, anyways. Um, we're going to be talking about how to incorporate witchcraft into your daily life a little bit more this month. So I hope you guys are ready. Um, today though, I really wanted to kind of just introduce you to the topic of being in the broom closet because that's not really a commonly used, well, it's, no, it's a really commonly used term, but not a lot of people like know about it while they're like secretly, like while they are in the broom closet, which I think is really funny. So being in the broom closet means that you are a witch, you consider yourself a witch, you practice witchcraft, but you haven't told any of your family members, um, you haven't really told anybody around you, it's kind of like your craft. So this is really like an integral part to my personal craft. I was in the broom closet up until the time I left my parents' house when I was like 18. Um, yeah, I like <laughs> uh, moved out, went to college, of course. Um, and even in college, like I didn't really talk about it. Um, I was like really afraid I was going to be ostracized. I wish I had done more of it. Like I think witchy is like my brand, you know, like that is kind of like the vibe that I just give off. But um, I was a little bit afraid to like say like, hey, like this is actually what I believe in. And like, hey, like this is blah, 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 blah. So um, I spent up until, honestly, until I moved into this apartment and I was able to kind of have like my altar set up, um, I was kind of like hesitant, you know, to to really share that part of my life with other people. I, I think if you go far enough back on my Instagram, you can see some like early witchcraft days, some like things I was doing where I'm like, I'm making tea, which I was, but it was like magical tea. I just didn't like say that. And it was like, I was the only person who knew, or maybe like other witches knew, like I don't, I don't know. Um, I think that I had a post that was like, happy Letha or happy Lunasa or something like that. And everyone's like, what is that? And I had to, I just, I don't think I answered any of the comments or anything. So I just, that was like big for me. Like that was a big moment for me, I guess, like posting about Aletha on my Instagram, which it now to me is very normal. Like, obviously I'm doing this. Like, <laughs> I think people, if they don't know, they're gonna find out. So being in the broom closet doesn't really like apply to my life right now because I am not really, I'm like, I obviously am making these videos. I wear this necklace every day to the point that like my boss, commented on it was like oh you're wearing a witch necklace and I just was like yeah and that was it like that was the end of the conversation I was shocked he knew what it was because most people like see this and assume I'm like Jewish which I mean technically my mom is so like hello um but like I that's not I don't I never we never practiced we did like Passover a couple times and like Hanukkah like once but I didn't really like we never did anyways um being in the broom closet for me was actually really integral to my craft. Um, I, within that like like little world that I had created, I had like witch friends on Tumblr that my, my parents didn't know about like my Tumblr or anything, um, which, oh God, Tumblr, Tumblr days were bad. Um, but like there I found like a community, like a witchy community. And then it kind of like translated onto Instagram after Tumblr did that weird like nudity thing. Uh, I don't really know. Um, and then kind of on Twitter, but I don't really like Twitter. I prefer YouTube, to be honest with you. I like this kind of like free form creative thing. Um, but Instagram is kind of like my main like community thing, I guess. Um, and I follow a lot of witches on Instagram. If I'm not following you on Instagram, just like send me a message and I'll say hi. So I was able to connect with witches all around the world via the internet, which I think is a huge thing for me. Um, I 
was able to like use a screen name. I didn't use any pictures of myself until like I became bold and was like, oh yeah, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Um, but you know, when I was like 13 and stuff, like when I, like back when I was making those like vampire fang uh, videos, like that is when I first got into witchcraft, to be honest with you. So there's that. Um, so the internet really helped me a lot. And I think that it is cool because the internet kind of provides an anonymous space, which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing, but it kind of has that anonymous space for you to grow and learn and see what you like. But that being said, I think the internet is a great place for you to kind of like explore where you can say like, okay, here's Wicca. Like this is what Wicca is. And here are like some books about Wicca so I can do more um, research or like, here's a goddess I'm interested in. Let me go like read more about her mythology. Oh, there's like all of these historical texts about her. Let me read that. So I think the internet really provides like a good jumping off point for uh, witches who are in the broom closet because it gives you that anonymity and that freedom to explore, right? Okay, so some reasons that people might be in the broom closet or might not be coming out to their family about practicing witchcraft and all of that is because either they feel unsafe or they feel that their family is going to judge them. Um, and in my experience, both of those things were like true for me. I didn't feel safe coming to uh, like to my parents because I was a minor um, and saying like, hey, like this is something I want to do. Um, at one point I attempted it uh, with my mom because I felt like she would be way more receptive to it and she really shut me down. She was like, um, you're like 12, you have no idea what you're talking about. And technically she was right. Most 12 year olds just don't know what they're talking about, which I think is a universal thing. Um, I was very convinced that I knew everything, but looking back, I was really cringy and she was within her rights, I think, to be like, mm, let's like not do this. Could she have handled it differently? Totally. She probably should have learned more about it. But eventually, as I continued my practice in secret, um, I kind of just like showed her stuff. And then eventually she was just like, oh, this is actually really cool. And like, I want to do it too. So yeah, <laughs> um, that was like a good part. I, I think I had spoken about this in again, another video I did in like January about like disapproving family members and stuff like that. Um, but I had, I have a lot of like religious trauma. Um, like that's just part of my personality now, I guess. Um, and when I was about that same age, when I started dyeing my hair and wearing all black and just being generally weird, I guess. I don't know. I like it. Um, I had a family member who actually believed I was like possessed by the devil. So that was like a whole thing. It was really dramatic. I've had therapy, we're fine. Um, but I just, yeah. Um, so like with those experiences, those are like, I mean, and when I mean, when I say like she thought I was possessed by the devil, like, like I'm talking like performed an exorcism at a family event in front of everybody or an exorcism during which I did the worst thing possible and like started nervous laughing because like I'm a piece of shit and like can't like be serious ever. So I, ugh, yeah, um, it was a disaster. So in terms of people like coming, like scared to come out of the broom closet, I freaking get it. Like I am there and my heart goes out to you. I know how hard it is. Um, I had at times where like my father would like go through my room every so often to like look for drugs. I. I was such a good kid, guys. Like, I had straight A's. I had a 4.0 GPA. I had, like, three friends. Like, anyways, my parents, like, would go through my room to, like, check, or my dad, really, would go through my room to check for stuff. And one day he found all my witchcraft books, and that was a nightmare. Like, he found my book, my old book of shadows, threw it away, all of my witchcraft books out, just anything that looked kind of witchy, except for, like, except for my altar, which is, like, crazy. Like, he overlooked it, because I was... I <laughs> I literally was like, oh no, it's my nature table. And he was like, that seems right. It's an altar, like there were candles and skulls. Like, I don't know, <laughs> it was really funny. Um, like the, like there was just the, the ignorance, the level of ignorance was incredible. Um, but anyways, enough about me. I can understand why people wouldn't want to do that. And um, if you are in the broom closet, that's totally cool. That's what I'm getting at. I was in the broom closet for most of my craft. I didn't tell a lot of people. I had bad experiences when I did try to, so that just kind of pushed me in further. And I was like, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I look like this, so like, I don't know what people expect, but um, I do understand like where people's apprehension comes from. Now, I advocate for being out of the broom closet when you feel comfortable not when anyone else tells you you should be so that's not this is not me being like everyone should just like talk about being a witch on the internet because that's not reality um but 
if you do decide to come out, like, I will always support you. I will always be here to support you, even if I'm the only one who supports you. So please just know that. Um, I had bad experiences with my family. That doesn't mean you will. Um, and honestly, like those family members weren't really like great for me in the first place. So I don't really know, like, it's hard for me to judge whether it's like a witchcraft thing or just like they're terrible people. Um, but <laughs> so like, I don't want my experiences to scare anybody or like, like put them off of that. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you don't feel safe doing it, you don't have to. Broom closet witches are so valid. Like y'all just work a little bit differently and that's cool and that's okay. Um, to do witchcraft, you don't need a huge like altar and like ritual space like I have on, on my planters and stuff, huh? Um, I can't stop buying plants, I'm sorry. I'm literally going to like a flower festival tomorrow with my witch friend and like, uh, I'm gonna buy so many plants. But anyways, um, I, I just want people to know that like, it's okay to be in the broom closet. It's okay to not tell people that you're a witch. It's okay to not even know. If you're just like just starting out, you don't have to go out and buy all this stuff. You can just read about it or you can do some meditation. It's all very like subjective, I think. I think everyone's practice, even if you're in a coven or whether or not you're in a coven or whether or not you're solitary is very subjective and like personal. So um, like, I. I don't know. This is maybe just me coming from a place of like, hey, now that I share this, I'm getting feedback on like my craft and stuff and like how elaborate some of it is. And it's like, yes, but it's only because I can do it now. Not because like I have to, like you don't have to do any of that. So anyways, this is me just like rambling a little bit um, in support of all of my beautiful broom closet witches. I see you and I am here for you. If you have questions or anything about like my experiences, about like how I did certain things, like um, instead of smoke cleansing my room, for example, like with incense or anything, cause like that was apparently drugs. I don't, uh, I don't know. It was, I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, instead of, so instead of using incense or like sage to smoke cleanse my room, I would use like an oil diffuser or like a scented candle. Um, or, and I would always practice like witchcraft super, super late at night. So no one would like hear anything. Like I was so sneaky about it, except for that one time that they like found it everything. But then I never did it again. I never let them catch me again. I was so good. There are tons and tons of resources. There are apps. There's so much stuff like online for you to like interact with. So hopefully like these videos are like good for broom closet, which is, I mean, it's just YouTube, right? It's, I'm just watching some girl talk about nothing. Um, but yeah, like, I just, I want to be here for Broom Closet Witches and I see you and you guys are doing great. Like, I love you. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about any more of my experiences, if you want to share stories of your experiences in the comments, I will be like on here, hopefully responding to everything. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.